Hello, my name is Zachary Johnson, and I'm giving a TED Talk on political polarization. I'm sure that there isn't much of a surprise that politics can lead to dire problems in the United States and even the world. It involves lying, manipulation, scandals, and even sometimes illicit and malfeasant criminal behavior. <coughs> Bill Clinton. Inevitable wars have even been started over corrupt politics. Look at the fall of Rome. Corrupt politicians. Look at World War I. Lack of political diplomacy and overextension of political alliances. Look at uh, the European Thirty Years' War. A war totally fought over political and religious ideology. Even the English Civil War was a vicious battle between monarchy and constitutionalism. But have you ever wondered what causes these constant war-torn tribulations, especially since governments and politicians were created to protect the country and enforce its rules, not break them for their own pleasure and motivations? The answer is profoundly simple, yet unsparingly complicated. Opinions. Political opinions impede the progress of a political system. People often forget that it takes more than one political ideology to successfully run an industrialized country with varying degrees of a free market. The European governments have competitions between several parties, which fosters a healthy democracy with many options. People think that only their particular opinion matters, and this fosters certain hostility against others with disparate opinions. This animosity grows into political intolerance, which then grows into a lack of political diplomacy, which then turns into war and sometimes even... Narrow-minded opinions impede the government from running efficiently, especially in the legislative branch, which should be, but isn't the branch of compromise. For example, in the United States, in which one of the first elected representative legislators was born, the use of the filibuster, a deadlock in Congress because of political differences and strategic voting, has turned from a rarity to a common occurrence. This filibuster is happening more and more often because people's opinions are becoming dogmatic, which causes them not to compromise and to come to a decision. Throughout American history, there have been myriad compromises that allow people to get some of what they want and some of what they don't want, so that democracy can prevail. The Connecticut Compromise came as a result of the Constitutional Convention and gave the Federalists a senator, while it also gave the Anti-Federalists a proportional population legislator, the House of Representatives. The Compromise of 1819 made Maine a free state to appease the anti-slavery proponents, and it made Missouri a slave state, catering to the whims of the pro-slavery proponents. Even in the 1980s, after not a violent and contentious argument and debate, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill would go to a bar and have a drink as comrades, despite the fact that they are from opposing parties. You just don't see that nowadays. These types of compromise and looking beyond political differences are slowly fading away as political strife and conflict is becoming more and more bold, dangerous, and sadly, common. We have turned parties that differ from our own beliefs into adversaries and enemies when they were meant to be partners to achieve a common goal, even if by somewhat different means. If Republicans and Democrats work together, or even if Socialists and Republicans work together, the nation could be served with both the beneficial crops of both political beliefs and hopefully with minimal backlash of disagreement and the benefit of a political and diplomatic friendship. The problem of political polarization is rooted deeply in our psychological characteristics as human beings. We naturally believe what we see, and since our environment is the overwhelmingly most important factor in forming our political beliefs, we naturally believe that only what we see must be correct, because we see it as a fact and as a reality that we partake in. But what we must keep in mind is that perception is not reality. It is only a personal reality that only relates you to others of the same perception. For example, one who grows up in a city of Squaler will certainly have a difficult political perception than an influent member of the European aristocracy. But both perceptions and both must be able to decide on the direction of a country, a piece of legislation, or how to fix foreign or domestic policy, with an open mind and not just the mind of an aristocrat or an impoverished proletarian worker. There is a way out of this blind tunnel, however. Like many other problems, the answer lies in education. Education forms the way we think combined with our environment. But our environment doesn't teach us, it simply tells us. Our education allows us to broaden the horizons of our immediate vision and think beyond what we know so that we can know more. It is how Europeans can learn about Korea, 
can learn more about European education. But more importantly, it can be how Americans in the South understand the political ideologies and motivations that characterize the liberal cosmopolitan cities of the North and East. Political expansion programs can be started in schools worldwide so that everybody can make an attempt to not only understand each other, but also more importantly, emphasize, empathize with each other. It is often, it is too often that we judge the cultures we don't understand, and we understand the culture that relates to us. But this has far-reaching consequences that lie in political deadlock and international debacles that lead to wars. As I said earlier, political corruption is rampant, but only because the conventional political system is always stalled by partisanship, as is diplomacy abroad. Socrates once said that true wisdom comes to each of us when we realize how little we understand about life, ourselves, and the world around us. The current world is one of false wisdom in which people assume they understand everything about life themselves and the world around them. Politics can be made once again to create the closest earthly version of truth if only people are willing to look beyond what they acknowledge as the truth.